Right, good afternoon once again. Um, please don't worry about the study material for this moment. I know you paid 50p for it. I'm sorry about that. That's inflation. This Gosho is very much to do with inflation, which is one of the three calamities and seven disasters of Buddhism. So I'm afraid you've had a little bit this afternoon. But this is only the first of a number of lectures. To be honest with you, I'm not quite how many sure how many lectures. But this is the first of a series on this most important Gosho called Risho Ankokuron. Risho Ankokuron. Uh, this is usually translated uh, in the Seiko Times and other publications as on securing the peace of the land through the propagation of true Buddhism. On securing the peace of the land through the propagation of true Buddhism. So I believe uh, this is going to be a very important lecture for all of us, or series of lectures, and that very much includes me because I have to battle with it and really understand it in order to give it to you. Uh, some of you may be disappointed that I'm not doing either of the two Goshos that I did mention previously, which was the true object of worship or the opening of the eyes, two other most important Gosho. But it came to me more and more strongly that at this particular point of time, starting as we are on this journey to the 21st century and entering a period of five years when we've all agreed throughout the world that we must try to create as many truly valuable people around us as possible that it's extremely important to know what is the broad aim of our advance to the 21st century and it's all contained in this one writing called Risho Ankokuran. So I'm going to do it in two parts with a 10 minute break in the middle. And the first part is entirely taken up with introducing you to this writing. And the second part will just begin with the first few paragraphs. The reason, other reasons that I've chosen to do the Risho Ankokuron are that really and truly it is Nichiren Daishonin's will and testament. Nikko Shonen, who was the second high priest as you know, said Nichiren Daishonin's teachings began with the Risho Ankokuron and ended with the Risho Ankokuron. And the more you enter into this Gosho and follow it, I think the more you'll understand that. Risho Ankokuron is totally relevant to the ills of this world today. It was of course written about the ills of the world or the smaller world of Japan in the medieval times in the 13th century. But now it's totally applicable to the world. It concerns the solution to all the problems that worry us desperately sometimes and cause people throughout the world immense suffering. I mean, of course, war, violence, vandalism, pollution, exhaustion of raw materials, through greed, spiritual pollution, and so on. In other words, the fruits of the three poisons of anger, greed, and stupidity that fill the world. Now when you look around the world now, even with the most recent happenings, war and violence is rife, isn't it? Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Southeast Asia, Kampuchea, Northern Ireland, Wherever you look, men are destroying men. Women, women, children being destroyed in the process. Huge sums of money are being spent by the major governments of the world 
in preparation for nothing else but war. Yet one third of the world is eating insufficient food to sustain proper active life. This is the terrible position that we're in at the moment. And worse still, the nuclear race continues and gets worse. The prolifer proliferation of weapons now is the greatest threat that one can possibly imagine. I really feel that it's almost out of control. I've said so often recently, quoted the remarks of Premier Hua of China, who said about a month ago, if we're fortunate, we will stave off a nuclear war for another 20 years, but that's as long as I feel it's possible. Mr. Hua is a thoughtful man. He's also a friend of President Decatur's. He wouldn't say that unless he felt it in his heart. But the point is, if the major leaders of this world are thinking in this way, then if everything is left to them, a nuclear war cannot fail to happen. Our task, as you know, incredible as it may seem, is to establish a peace force by the year 2000 which is strong enough to hold the balance in the world, to keep people from going more insane and doing more and more stupid, ignorant and, and absurd things. So in a sense, this Gosho could easily be called on securing the peace of the world through the establishment or propagation of Buddhism. It is really the foundation for all our activities for Kos and Rufu. And we should understand it and do our utmost to engrave this great writing in the very depths of our lives. Also, this Gosho is very relevant to what we'll be talking about at our annual general meeting next Saturday, the 11th of October. So in every sense, it's most appropriate for the times. As you know, next Sunday will be the 12th of October, the anniversary of the inscription of the Dai Gohonzon. And next Monday will be the 13th of October, Monday week, which is the anniversary of the death of Nichiren Daishonin. And 1981, 13th of October, will be the 700th anniversary of the death of Nichiren Daishonin. All this is of immense significance. We are starting a new phase of the chapter, a new chapter of the movement for Kosen Rufu. And the 700th anniversary of Nichiren Daishonin's death will be like a signal next year when we really have to move forward basing our actions on Risho Ankokuron. So why was this Gosho written? As you know, Nichiren Daishonin declared Namyo Horengekyo on the 28th of April, 1253. And it was only three years later, between 1256 and another five years to 1261, that the worst series of natural disasters occurred in Japan that had ever been known in all its history. 1256 itself was especially a terrible year. It was the culmination, in fact, of a succession of, a succession of natural disasters which began not long after the end of the great period in Japan, which is called the Heian period, a period of great peace and prosperity and culture, a period that was based, in fact, on the theoretical understandings of the Lotus Sutra of the Tiantai sect. After that period ended, as you know, Buddhism became fragmented in Japan. 
and these terrible disasters began to occur. Epidemics of huge extent, earthquakes, storms and typhoons, droughts and fires, and intense cold spells. The people through this were in absolute agony and death was literally everywhere. It's beyond our imagination really living as we do in a, a so-called prosperous society. Before he declared nam myoho renge in 1253, as you know, Nichiren Daishonin had spent 14 years studying all the various Buddhist scripts that were available in many different temples in Japan. And his purpose was to discover why, if Buddhism was, was the true teaching, the people of Japan were suffering so hugely. This was his period of preparation. But when Nichiren Daishonin saw these disasters coming to a head, in 1256, he determined that he must take concrete action to save the people. He must remonstrate with the authorities and try, in other words, to shakabuku them, to make them understand that the only teaching with the power to save Japan and rectify this terrible situation was through chanting nam myoho renge -kyo. Now you'll appreciate in those days it was a feudal society. The sovereign of the nation was not the people as it is in a democratic society today or it's supposed to be. The sovereign of course was the emperor and in that time in Japan the emperor was only a puppet in fact and Japan was ruled by a samurai government who controlled the people very strictly. So Nichiren Daishonin knew that he must go direct to the samurai rulers and try to convince them. So I think it's an interesting thought, this man all on his own at that time with a very few followers, developing this determination in his life, this incredible ichinen to challenge the ruling powers of that time in Japan. So, first of all, he wanted to get his references absolutely right in stating his case to the government in order to show that it was in the direct orthodox line of Buddhism that people should chant nam myoho renge -kyo. And so he set off in 1258 to a temple called Jisoji, which is not so far from where the head temple is today. And he spent two years there framing his case and making sure that it was correctly annotated to all the Buddhist scriptures. While he was there, he met Nikko Shonin, who was a young man at that time, an acolyte, and Nikko Shonin joined him and of course stayed with him from then onwards through all his persecutions. Then he returned to the seat of government, which was Kamakura, and on the 16th of July, 1260, 720 years ago, he submitted his thesis, Risho Ankokuron, to the government represented by the most powerful man in Japan, who at that time was a man called Hojo Tokiyori. Hojo Tokiyori actually was a retired regent, but nevertheless, behind the scenes, was the ultimate power. At that time, Nichiren Daishonin was 39 years old. Not so old. Seven years had passed since he'd first declared nam myoho renge -kyo. Now Nichiren Daishonin knew, of course, that if his great exhortation failed, he would inevitably suffer intense persecution. He had no doubt about that whatsoever. But he felt he must do everything in his life to try to make the government see sense. And through that, to help the people to see sense. And of course, this effort on his part rose out of his great compassion. He challenged 
the establishment of the entire nation. Just a month after he'd presented the thesis to Hojo Tokiori, the first attack on his life occurred. He lived in a small cottage in the outskirts of Kamakura, a place called Matsubagayatsu. And the cottage was attacked by a group of uh, Nembutsu followers, people followers of the Nembutsu sect, provoked, of course, by the authorities. And they tried to kill him and burn his cottage down, but fortunately he escaped. This, of course, was the sign that Hojo Tokiyori, the regent, had ignored his warning. By the 12th of May, the next year, he was already in exile, the first exile on Izu Peninsula. And eight years, uh, two years later, Hojo Tokiyori died. And eight years later, Nichiren Daishonin's prediction in this Gosho, Risho Ankokuron, that inevitably, if things continued as they were, Japan would suffer foreign invasion, actually took place when the Mongols sent their first delegation to Japan from Genghis Khan, demanding Japan's subjection to, the, to their rule. Now, Japan refused this, but it threw the nation in a great panic. And six years later, the Mongols attacked Kyushu Island. So it'll be clear to you that all Nichiren Daishonin's persecutions culminating in the attempt to behead him on Tatsunakuchi Beach and his exile to that grim place, Sado Island, began from when he wrote and presented the Risho Ankokuron. So next, I'd like with you to look at why this writing should have had such a great effect. So Nichiren Daishonin had already declared the three great secret laws. And the Risho Ankokuron was really the, the description of the action from understanding and practicing those three great secret laws. The action which would take place within the individual self within society and in the land. That is to say the three realms as they're known in Buddhism. Risho Ankokuron is the reason or the basis for why Kosen Rufu is essential for the happiness of people everywhere. So although he addressed it to Hojo Tokiyori in fact, behind Hojo Tokiyori, there are all the leaders down through history. He was addressing everybody who is ignorant of the true meaning of life, and especially to the leaders and those whom others follow. So Risho An Kokoron will never get out of date. It's as valid today as it was yesterday and will be as valid tomorrow until Kosen Rufu is achieved and then maintained. It's as valid for Mr. Carter and Margaret Thatcher and their successors as it was for Hojo Tokiori. And furthermore, the whole purpose of our efforts in Itai Doshin, in unity together, is to carry these teachings forward and to make them known to as many people as possible in one way or another. And to make sure that this heritage is transmitted to our children and on from there to our children's children until Kosen Rufu is achieved. So of course, the purpose is to save the world from destruction. Needless to say, it's not in any sense in the nature of things that this world should destroy itself. This world has a purpose. 
in the universe as a whole. And it's the very task, isn't it, of the bodhisattvas of the earth, as we learn from the Gosha, to make sure that this world is not destroyed through spreading the ultimate truth. So the writing of this paper, since it gives the argument or the basis for debate on this subject, was a monumental cause and it had, of course, inevitably, a monumental effect. All the negative force or forces tried in every way possible to stop this movement from beginning. And especially this negative force was felt in Nichiren Daishonin's own life and manifested itself in these intense persecutions which he had to suffer from beginning to end. So you may know in the letter to the brothers, another Gosho, Nichiren Daishonin said, if you propagate it, i.e. the Gohonzon, devils will arise without fail. Were it not for these, there would be no way of knowing that this is the true teaching. Anything that is immensely positive and progressive and valuable encounters natural opposition from the opposing negative forces. So it's not surprising that this particular teaching, Nichiren Daishonin's teaching and the Gohonzon have met with such intense opposition through until this very day. There are also other important points in this Gosho which caused it to have such great effect. Firstly, Risho Ankoron or Kokoron is proof of, or one of the proofs of Nichiren Daishonin's enlightenment. His predictions made in this paper all came true through his understanding of Buddhism and the law of cause and effect. And traditionally, especially in those times, a Buddha's predictions coming true was proof that he was a Buddha. And of course, in his turn, Nichiren Daishonin had proved, hadn't he, the predictions of Shakyamuni Buddha. And secondly, it's the prime teaching on which all further remonstrations, debates, and arguments have been based from that time onwards. And it contains in that sense everything that is necessary to help people to understand the validity of the true teachings. And thirdly, it was a very important public declaration, declaration of the validity and necessity of nam myoho renge -kyo. This Gosho was not addressed to members it was addressed to society represented by Hojo Tokiori, the regent. And in that sense, it differs from all other Gosho. It was written in classical Chinese in the formal way of the day and addressed to the government and through that the people. So for this reason, Nichiren Daishonin did not end the title with the word Sho as he does with most other Gosho. Shoho Jiso Sho. Kaimoku Sho. Sho means explanation of a theory. Nor did Nichiren Daishonin end it with the word Kyo, such as Hokke Kyo. Hokke Kyo. Kyo meaning a, a teaching of the Buddha or a sutra. Instead of that, he ended it with the word ron. Ron meaning thesis or essay. In other words, it was a work of action, not theory. It was the thesis of a great bodhisattva addressed to society for society's benefit. So show, kaimoku show, and kyo, hoke kyo, are all concerning theory. But ron 
is actuality. Now I'd like to just mention uh, a word or two about the way in which this document is drawn up. As so often, Nichiren Daishonin develops his thesis through question and answer. And the whole of this Gosho is based on these questions and answers. He, he sets the scene for it by uh, making out that the questions are asked by a traveler who's called at the home of somebody to spend the night there. And during the course of the evening, gets into this serious discussion about the state of Japan. And the host who answers the questions is, of course, Nichiren Daishonin. So in other words, he's really in framing the Gosho in that way, asking Hojo Tokiori, the regent, to stop for a moment on his journey of life and pause and think and face what was going on before he continues any further. The traveler is uh, a Nembutsu follower, a follower of the Nembutsu sect. At the time this was the fastest growing sect in Japan. And as you may know, it taught a doctrine which was pure escapism, a doctrine which aimed towards a person going to a paradise or a pure land after he died. It was saying, in other words, there's nothing you can do about the state of things as they are now and the state of your life as it is now, except to be good and chant what we tell you to chant, and then you'll go to the pure land after your death. Truly, it was uh, opium for the people. And it spread very quickly. So, in that sense, Nichiren Daishonin was addressing this Gosha not only to Hojo Tokuyori, but also to all ignorant and misguided people who were suffering so much as a result. So, he wished to prove through this Gosha that a religion is only true when it improves and gives happiness in the midst of this ordinary world, in the midst of daily life and daily affairs. There are a total of ten questions asked by the traveller. These roughly cover three different subjects. First of all, uh, they are about the state of Japan, which we could also say now this is the state of the world. And secondly, questions about the reasons for this situation. And thirdly, questions which brought out the solution to the problem and how it can be transmitted into the future. So in other words, Nichiren Daishonin was following through these questions his usual sequence of preparation, revelation and transmission. So there are ten questions but Nichiren Daishonin only gives nine answers. The tenth question required no answer because, as you'll discover later, the guest by that time had been shakabukud and knew the answer himself and was determining to set about carrying it out. The title, Risho Ankokuron, of course is important as it is in all teachings of the Buddha because the title contains everything that is in that, su in that teaching. So as I said, this title, <coughs> I think perhaps not in the best way, is translated in the English publications from Japan as on securing the peace of the land through the propagation of true Buddhism. But I think this is a bit narrow and when you get down to the actual translation of each word, it would probably be better to call it Thesis on Securing Peace in the Land Through Establishing the Ultimate Truth. Thesis on Securing Peace in the Land Through Establishing the Ultimate Truth. 
So if we now examine the title a little more deeply, then you can see why that uh, is perhaps more meaningful. So as you know, Chinese characters carry within them the capacity to go immensely deep in meaning. They can contain so many shades of meaning and such an enormous amount in a very small space. But even in the West, uh, we try to give things good titles, don't we? I mean, I suppose you could say even the word punk has a lot of meaning. It sounds, well, to me, horrible anyway. Some of you may like it. And the word England, of course, conjures up everything you know about England. So this title, Risho Ankokoran, contains an enormous amount. So if you'd look at this uh, visual aid over there, beautifully done, thank you very much, whoever did it. Ron, taking the last character of all, as I said, means thesis. We've already covered that. <coughs> it's a thesis concerning actuality or reality, present-day conditions. And as I said, you could say that this word Ron is much more even than thesis, very important thesis, a great bodhisattva's thesis addressed to society for society's benefit. Something of utmost value and importance. And then the words Risho and Ankoku. So Risho, as you see, is a shortening of two characters, Ritsu and Sho. Ritsu Sho. Risho. Meaning establishing the ultimate truth. And Ankoku, securing peace in the land or the country or the world. We show Ankoku. The land has no boundaries necessary. It could mean your hometown or your own house or the whole of England or the whole world. So in using this word Risho, Nichiren Daishonin was conveying instantly something which was very important, which we of course can't see without a knowledge of the Japanese language, but which educated men of those days would be concerned about immediately. First of all, in saying Risho, establishing the ultimate truth, he was firmly saying from the very outset that the ultimate truth is not yet established. That is point number one. So immediately to anyone who was a leader of the land, this would be a shaking point from the very beginning. Something to shock them. So really in saying that, Nichiren Daishonin is incorporating what is known as the five-fold comparisons. Maybe those of you who uh, attended the lectures on the study manual will remember that. But the five-fold comparisons lead to the establishment that nam myoho renge -kyo is the highest of all teachings. You may remember it, there are five stages of it, that Buddhism is more profound than other philosophies, that Mahayana, the second one, Mahayana is more profound than Hinayana. And the third one, that the Lotus Sutra is more profound on a higher teaching than the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings. And the fourth is that the essential teachings in the Lotus Sutra, that is to say chapters 15 to 28, are higher than the theoretical teachings in the first 14 chapters. And finally, that Nichiren Daishonin's Buddhism of nam myoho renge -kyo, the Buddhism of the sowing, is therefore uh, a deeper and higher teaching than the Buddhism of the harvest of Shakyamuni. So this one word, Risho, incorporates all that. And furthermore, the word Risho includes the three great secret laws. 
So of course you might say, how on earth can that be? Establishing the truth. On the other hand, you can understand that it's great if it does include that. So as you know, the three great secret laws are first of all, the Honmon no Daimoku. That is to say, the essential or true invocation. And secondly, the Honmon no Honzon. That is to say, the essential or true object of worship. And thirdly, the Honmon no Kaidan. That is the essential or true sanctuary. So let's take first of all Honmon no Honzon. The second one I mentioned. The essential object of worship. So show of Risho, as we said, means the ultimate truth. And the ultimate truth is Myo and Myo of Myoho Renge Kyo. The ultimate truth, the unseen law, which is called Myo. Myoho Renge Kyo, or the Gohonzon. So Risho means, therefore, establishing the Gohonzon in the time of Mapo. Establishing the Gohonzon in this time of Mapo, the ultimate truth. And secondly, Honmon no Daimoku, the essential invocation. Chanting Daimoku is faith and practice, isn't it? Shin and Gyo, of Shin Gyo Gaku. The motivation for us to chant is faith. And the result of our chanting, or the result in doing it, is action. So, by having faith in the truth, which is show, the ultimate truth, leads us to take action, which is based on the truth, which is establishing. Action is establishing the truth, show. So, by chanting, Daimoku, we are establishing the truth in the land. First of all, of course, in our own lives, and then gradually, as we teach others, out into society. We are establishing, in other words, correct action. Correct being show, the truth, and action being establishing. So Tentai said, by understanding the mystic law, true action will follow. Risho. By understanding the mystic law, true action will follow. Risho. And then Honmon no Kaidan, the essential sanctuary. As we said, Ritsu of Risho means establishing. Establishing in one place or land or world. So, Risho meaning establishing the ultimate truth in one place also means, doesn't it, the sanctuary. The sanctuary, of course, can be a formal one, such as your Putsudan at home or the Shohondo at Taisekiji. But it can also be the land, your village or town, wherever people are gathering to practice to the Gohonzon, or gradually the whole world. Creating, in other words, the Buddha's land. So Risho then contains the three great secret laws in that one word or two characters, and meaning that by establishing the truth and the correct practice in one's life, it can change the lives of everybody. This is what Risha Ankokuran is all about. That one person can change a whole country, or indeed the whole world, as it says in one paragraph, of that, of the novel of the human revolution. So Nichiren Daishonin said in another Gosha, the true entity of life, 
Only I, Nichiren, at first chanted Namyo Horenge Kyo, but then two, three, and a hundred followed, chanting and teaching others. Likewise, propagation will unfold in this way in the future. Doesn't this signify emerging from the earth? At the time of Kosen Rufu, the entire Japanese nation will chant Namyo Horenge Kyo as surely as an arrow aimed at the earth cannot miss its target. So I hope with that introduction you can all begin to feel something of the importance of Risho Ankokoron and realize that it really is the foundation for all our efforts to teach others to Shakabuku and that it is applicable not just to Japan but to the whole world as it is today. So we'll have now a 10-minute break, please, and then we'll carry on uh, for a little bit longer dealing with the first part of it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.